What better way to start off a video than with blades? Hi there, it's Yum's time. If you're new to this channel, video, whatever, this is a place where I eat stuff. So, in case the title didn't give it away, there you go. That's too weird for you. Bye. If you're here for it, cool. Because guess what, kids? We're in the land of poets and thinkers. And also, you may notice that this box is a little bit bigger than normal. Um, Universal Yums did like a little thing, again, they do it on occasion, where you can get the... So this is the... Uh, I can't really... I don't know how to show this to you without showing you my address and you don't need to know where I live. Uh, the Yum Yum box, which is, in essence, a far larger box than the typical Yum Box. Um, I would venture to say it's about double size-ish. There's definitely more snacks in it. They had a little special going, where it was, um, get... Instead of the $14 I pay per month, um, <clears throat> get the extra yums for just another $5, and I was like, okay. I was a little disappointed. I didn't know this, but, um, apparently Universal Yums gives away where they're going every month, so if you want to be surprised like me, um, don't follow them on social media. Uh, or at least Facebook. I follow them on Twitter and they don't do it on Twitter. Don't start doing it on Twitter, Universal Yums. I don't do it! Don't do it. <clears throat> However, they do it on Facebook. But if you do want to know, then it's handy because then you can decide, you know, if you want to upgrade your Yums or not, or, you know, whatever. So anyway, uh, apparently Germany is the land of, uh, flinkers and poets. So, ooh, yes. Giant, giant box of stuff. I don't want to turn it too much, otherwise, obviously, things are going to start falling out. Oh, Das Germany. With my terrible German accent, yeah. Sorry, I'm probably going to be doing that in the video. I'm <clears throat> sort of sorry, sort of not, because I'm a dumb American, so can I hide behind that? Is that okay? Like, stupid American makes dumb accent? <laughs> anyway, welcome to Germany. So we have all sorts of uh, fun little facts here, like Munich, where 15 million pints of beer are consumed each year at Munich's Oktoberfest. I don't drink beer, so that's not appealing to me. However, some of you might enjoy it, so go to Munich. Or if you want to have a, a go to Weimar, get ready for a zesty taste of the unique... Oh no, German, why? The... 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 Hmm, the... the Schwebel market. Schwebel market? I'm gonna stop. And anyway, as usual, if you're not familiar with Universal Yums, on the back of their little uh, fun thingamabobber, they also have an area here where you can break your yums and do all kinds of other fun things, solve puzzles, find out, uh, you know, what some of next month might hold. A lot of chips, looks like. Chips, bag of snackum, snacky things. Luckily it's cold outside, so I don't have to worry about anything melting. At the most, it would be I'd have to worry about it freezing, but, I mean, you get to it soon enough, then it's okay. As usual, our little box comes with its little booklet. So, the booklet is full of all kinds of fun facts and things and facts, yeah. I don't know if I'm getting off base with my... I'm just very off base. You may be... F I'm gonna ruin this, but, uh... I've never actually tried to pronounce the name of this castle before. Uh, the super fancy castle that you may have seen. If I can, I can't see what I'm doing. I really should, honestly. I should move my my recording thing, but I'm too lazy to because then I'll actually look at my other monitor. Look, I am not a professional, and I have never claimed to be. So, get used to non-professionalism. Neuschwanstein, uh, Schwan, Neuschwan Castle, Schwanstein. Anyway, there's stuff in here that if you want to read, you can read. Let's move on to actual food, because that's why you're here. You're not here to hear me ramble like an idiot. Although, you could order various somethings at McDonald's. What can you order at German McDonald's? Donuts, Pizza Max, beer, or Apple Oreo McFlurries? Probably beer. Because we can't do that here in America, because humans are dumb. Where's the answer for this? So the answer is all of the above. So you can order at McDonald's. Donuts, Pizza Max, beer, and Apple Oreo McFlurries. Because they are known for serving up some seriously unique local concoctions. Burgers with pizzas for buns. That honestly sounds kind of like a weird American, like, that we would do here. Cheese-filled donuts. I don't, not so much. But we do have weird donuts in places. 
uh, cheese filled donuts with cranberry sauce, and spiced or apple Oreo McFlurries. And to wash it all down, the most authentic local drink of all beer. On second thought, maybe that last one isn't so surprising. It's not, clearly. What shall we eat first? Mm -hmm. Questions. Questions, questions. What do I feel like eating? We've had some of this before. Universal yums. I remember the curly peanuts. I've had these. Oh. oh, there's Arabic on here. That's interesting. They're pretty good, though. So we're not going to do those first, because I've already eaten them. Shinken and Kas. Nuffles. Zweibles. You know what? Let's eat some Zweibles. Zweibles. They're snacky, crunchy. Things. Although I do like that, that those are called Nuffles. That's pretty great. Zweibles, where are you? Oh, these are XOX. Uh, Zweibles. Assuming I'm pronouncing that correct. Onion flavored corn rings. So. Crunchy onion rings. Ha. Every October, hundreds of thousands of people gather in the city of Weimar for one reason and one only. Onions. At the country's famous... Oh no, there's that word that we were talking about earlier. Schweibelmarkt. Schweibelmarkt. I think. Onion market. Onion lovers spend three whole days indulging in zesty specialties like onion bacon pie. Woo. Cheesy onion soup. Eh. Uh, broiled meat with mushrooms and onions. Eh. Liver with raw onions. Eh. While munching away, visitors can even browse an extensive collection of Zweibelzoff, colorful German folk art made with, you guessed it, onions. Want to join in the festi f zesty festivities? With these flavorful onion rings, you'll get a taste of Germany's favorite and flavorful Zweibelmarkt. You can't make fun of anything like that. Because we have some really weird crap here in the USA. Humans are weird. Let's be honest. All of us. Everywhere. All over the country. This country, your country... Countries that neither of us are from or have ever been to. We're all a bunch of frickin' weirdos. But, you know what? Let's eat. Tastes like onion rings. A little bit chewier than I thought they'd be after their initial crunch. It's got, like, real onion. Like, because they're pretty strong, actually. The weird thing is they don't really smell, although to be honest, I can't really say that like onions themselves really have like a, um, I mean, like a super like onion smell, not like garlic, you know, if you want a comparison. So I mean, going into this, you wouldn't really have an idea of how strong they are. But they're pretty good. And I must say, they're the kind that like, if you ate, you could probably eat this whole bag and then kind of walk up to someone and be like, Hi. Mm, bad things would happen. Not for you, for the person. And you just laugh at them. Because you're a terrible person. What can I say? Those rivals are a fun start. And we've got a long way to go. So we've got to get big boxes to go through. Now that we've finished eating onion rings, let's cleanse the palate with a little bit of... <gasps> hedgehog, hedgehog slice. Chocomonk. It is a uh, volmilk. Is the ch is that a, like more of a k sound or is it a, a ch sound? Volmilk, chocolate, chocolate clearly. This is the hedgehog slice bar, milk chocolate with cookies, and it looks to me like some s'mores are happening in this lovely little picture. Don't worry, you won't find anything prickly inside this yum. In Germany, hedgehog slice, also called cold snout or cellar cake interesting combination of stuff there, you guys. Refers to a famous no-bake dessert made with chocolate and German biscuits, similar to graham crackers. To make this local specialty, alternating layers of biscuit and chocolate are stacked in a rectangular cake pan, then stored in the fridge or cellar until solid. The result is a delightfully sweet cake candy cookie hybrid enjoyed at parties across the country, especially amongst children. Because why not? <laughs> Who wouldn't? The yum you are holding has all the elements of hedgehog slice, packed with crumbly German biscuits and creamy milk chocolate in a classic rectangular shape. So, is this a yum a candy? A cake? A cookie? We may never know for sure. What we do know is that you'll want to hog the whole bar. <laughs> so the reason I thought it was might be something s'mores-like is if you'll take a closer look, like this, to me, I thought, oh, you know, marshmallow graham cracker chocolate. Uh, clearly I'm wrong. It's a thick bar, thick with two C's, but it's shorter, so, you know. 
We'll see what she tastes like. So of course we got our lovely gold foil, not gold, <laughs> this is not gold, this is silver. Ladies and gentlemen, colors with Nicole. How to tell them. So it's already broke for me, huzzah. Um, but of course it's got the usual partition-y happiness that uh, most bars tend to. So let's snap off a square and sample the square. So yeah, you can see some of the things that I thought were uh, marshmallow and realized I was wrong. So far it looks like a candy bar, so. It was a little on the firmer side, but it was a little bit colder because it was outside for a wee bit. I don't know about the homemade version. This is candy. Because <clears throat> this is basically chocolate with the graham cracker like stuff just kind of hanging out in there. So it's got a bit of that crunch. Pretty simple concept. Pretty good. The chocolate isn't. It's hard to describe because it says it's not as sweet as some other chocolate I've had in general. Not just American chocolate. But it's not dark chocolate either, so I guess maybe there's just less sugar involved. But it's still good. So if you want something different, head chop it up. I spent most of the day meal prepping, aka cooking a lot, so that way I can you know, actually have food when I'm at work, rather than just eating pure garbage like I'd normally do. But speaking of non-healthy things, oh, I don't know, this might, this might be okay. It looks like chocolate covered or candy covered something. They're, I don't know what the, the U means with the little doodads over it, how it's pronounced. So this is Gewurz Mandolin. Cool stuff. Huh. They are chocolate covered roasted almonds with spices. Oh, so not just regular chocolate. We have two words to describe Germany's favorite Christmas markets sensory overload. You'll see sparkling nativity scenes and handsome, handum, handum, hmm, <laughs> handmade ornament stalls brush up against shoppers purchasing last minute presents, listen to festive live music, and hear the clink of glasses and the word Prost as friends sip hot mulled wine. But above all, you'll smell the mouthwatering scent of these things that I'm not going to try and say again because I'll butcher it just some more. Sorry, Germany. These warm candied almonds are the highlight of every German Christmas market, sold in colorful paper cones in a myriad of sticky sweet flavors. But it doesn't get any more festive than the spiced variety with melty cinnamon cocoa coating. So if you didn't make it to a German Christmas this market this year, which I'm in the middle of the United States, so no. Um, no worries. You'll still get to partake in the best sensory experience of all. Taste! It is the best! Constantly defeated by bags. Smells a little bit of that. Smell a little bit of spice. A little bit of chocolate. A little bit of nuttiness. It smells pretty good. They kind of look like they're coated in uh, powdered sugar. They are coated in powdered sugar. <laughs> oh, it's softer than I thought it would be. Interesting. I was expecting, I don't know, something crunchier, maybe, for whatever reason? Even though the nut itself isn't, like, the super crunchy almond at all. Kind of more that mellow chocolate. You can taste the spices. It's different. I like it. It is. It does have, like, kind of a Christmassy wintery, holiday kind of flavor, if that makes any sense. You know how some holidays just kind of have flavors associated with them? This is, this is one of them. Hmm. It's quite good. It's a hefty little package too, so there's a lot in here. Sugar, almonds, milk, cocoa butter. How come this isn't in German? Chocolate liqueur. Hazelnuts. Wait, what? Almonds coated with some kind of hazelnut chocolate confectionery. 
Well, all right then. Anywho, I'm gonna eat these. And uh, they're very good. And if you ever have the chance to try them, you go. They would be a nice Christmasy snacky. For once, it's not the middle of the night, so let's have some morning snacks. Kind of, sort of. I mean, it's like 11 something. Sunrise! Crunchy Nuss! I'm assuming it's some kind of a granola e bar or a puffed cereal and. I don't know what Nuss is, though. Hazelnut Sunrise. Milk chocolate with puffed rice cereal, hazelnuts, and cocoa cream. Not exactly a ringing breakfast endorsement. But who cares? We all eat donuts and muffins, so it's kind of irrelevant what we have in the mornings. Anyway, haha! <laughs> you know how school kids are always trying to trade for better snacks during lunchtime? A turkey sandwich for a PB&J, an apple for a banana, a carton of milk for a juice box? Well, in Germany, the one snack that everyone wants to get their hands on is sunrise. These crunchy cereal squares are some of the most popular school bag treats enjoyed by students across Germany for lunches and snacks. Packed with light puffed rice, crispy corn cereal, roasted hazelnuts, and milky cocoa cream, we wouldn't trade these for anything. Nothing would even come close. <gasps> oh my! Gracious! Easy to open, too. Just look at that. Already opened. Oh! Instead of having to fight with it, like everything else I have to fight with, as I drop the, the bit there on my pants. Yeah! So we're just we're covered in chocolate. We look pretty tasty. Look at this. Look at the deliciousness. You want it? Look at that texture! Oh, indeed. Tasty. So pretty much tastes as described with the rice and the cereal and all that jazz. And that crunchy hazelnut. Use some milk. Ooh, I wonder what it'd be like if you dunked it. Dunk it in the milk. Ow. It does kind of have like a kind of like a weird aftertaste thing happening. I'm not sure what that's from. I don't know if it's the rice or the corn seal or cereal. Hmm. It ain't great, which is kind of disappointing. Yeah, no oh well. Maybe I'm the only person that has that issue. In which case, I guess it sucks to be me. Let's have some nuffles! Because it's like ham and cheese. And, uh, I'm all about ham and cheese. Unless it's Swiss cheese. And then I'm gonna be like, oh, I'm sad. Because I'm not into Swiss cheese, but, eh, whatever. This is, uh, Schinken and Kase nuffles. And I'm pretty positive I mispronounced all of that. But, beside the point. It's a ham and cheese corn snack. Cool. For Germans, there's no such thing as too much ham and cheese. Their typical breakfast, eggs with ham slices and cheese on bread. Second breakfast, an open-faced ham and cheese sandwich. Dinner, a platter of rolled ham, cheese, pickled vegetables, and bread. And in between, these ham and cheese crisps. Here you guys, hobbits. What's happening? Breakfast, second breakfast, lemonsies, dinner, supper. Anywho, uh, it only makes sense that Germany's quintessential food pairing would also be the country's favorite snack flavor. With the savory taste of ham and cheese packed into every crunchy bite, these yums make for one authentic German culinary treat. The only thing that could make these crisps more authentic? Layering them in juicy ham and cheese sandwich. Why not? Calm down. Which ham and cheese? I'm not gonna eat the whole bag. This, look at how big this bag is. Look at it. Look at the sizableness of this bad boy. However, having said that, if ham and cheese is the big deal, how come your clue included cabbage? Nothing here is cabbage flavored. Also, okay, look. Chip places that make chips. Don't make a bag this big, okay? When this is what we're actually getting. Bag? It's literally this much. It is half the bag. From here to here. All right. I mean, I realize that... You, look, look, what? 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 Just... Why? I realize you want the air so that they can bingo-bango around in there and be, you know, not breaking stuff, but, I mean, these feel kind of like they're not going to break very easily in the first place. And you don't need that much air. Calm down. Anywho. I guess it smells like jam and cheese? It's very cheesy. Well, there's... Okay. It's like a real sharp... I don't know. I guess cheddar-ish? I'm not really sure what the cheese flavor is. 
or if it's just like generic cheese. You know, how like we have fake cheese. A lot of places have fake cheese. It's not really a particular flavor. It's just this is cheese flavored, even though that's not really a normal real thing. But we've somehow made it a thing. So, I guess if I had to pick a cheese flavor, it would be generic cheese flavor, and then yes, some ham. Very strong though. Hmm. It's strong to the point that it's almost kind of like off-putting where it's like, whoa. Step on the brakes just a little bit, guys. It's okay. You don't need it to be that, like, whoop out. Because with the ham bit, it's almost like it's, I hesitate to say too savory. I almost want to say too salty in a way, you know? Like when you eat too much ham and it's to get to the point where you're like, I gotta stop. Anyway, there's nothing cabbage flavor in here. Y'all led me to believe Germany was a thing of cabbage. And I guess that's a, you know, you guys eat cabbage over there, but... I thought we were going to Ireland. I've been tricked. I was gonna have lunch. Because I'm hungry. But due to various circumstances, now I have to wait another hour. And I'm kind of annoyed because when food is, like, something that I would like to have, I would like to have it. I hate waiting. I also just hate waiting. Like, it's just annoying. <sighs> so, I guess I'll have a snack, even though I would like to have a meal. Hot meal, but... Mm, anywho. My problems. First world problems. So, I guess I really shouldn't complain. So, let's have this Himbeer Cream... I'm kind of, like, half paying attention to the, the thing. Himbeer Cream Chocolade. Mit natural cream, natural cream, nip, 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 nip. Oh, stop. I can't do Germans. I'm sorry, Germany. I'm awful. It's anyway, it's dark chocolate with breath risen. <clears throat> I can't do English either, apparently. Maybe I should just not do this. <laughs> Fired. It's dark chocolate with raspberry cream. We're not sure we would have survived through much of 18th century Germany. Why? Because there wasn't any chocolate. A legit concern. When chocolate first arrived in Germany in the 1700s, it was considered a luxury good, reserved only for aristocracy and the wealthy. You see, at that time, chocolate had to be made by hand, which was slow and costly process that required extremely skilled craftsmen. But with the arrival of chocolate manufacturing in the 19th century, chocolate became much easier to produce, increasing locals' access to the decadent sweet. Fast forward to today, and chocolate is now one of Germany's top exports, known for its superior quality and flavor. This creamy raspberry flavor bar is no exception. With German chocolate like this, we're happy to live in the 21st century. Indeed! Although, to be honest, I've never been, like, a super big fan of the combination of, like, raspberry and chocolate. Because, like, I've never been... It's mostly not so much the raspberry, it's just the whole concept of, like, tart stuff with the sweet stuff. And even then, this is dark chocolate, so it's not even that sweet. It's always just been kind of, like, eh to me. Also, I don't really have a way of breaking this up. They didn't sectionalize it. It's very pretty and it's nice foil. But it's also just one giant... Oh, no, they did. It's just hard to tell because lots of lots of lines. So, okay. Let's uh, divvy this up a wee baby bit. Oh, okay. So, okay. The, the That kind of made me think it was more on the gooey side. And it's just not. It's just a regular old... Look, there's floof in here. Ta -da. So, uh, let's floof it up, shall we? You can smell the raspberry and chocolate. They're pretty good. It's kind of like your typical, you know, we put raspberry and chocolate together and here it is. But, you know, that's, that's about it. Like I said, not super my cup of tea, but, you know. Whatever. It's a snack. I'll take it, I guess. But if you are someone who does like raspberry and chocolate together, I think you'd really like this. Because the the raspberry bit, it does have like a nice consistency and texture. So, and it's not like overpowering either. It's not like raspberry. It's just kind of like, here's some raspberry, hanging out with your chocolate. I'm just all having a good time. I guess I will just continue eating sugar until I can actually have real food. It's cold! Burp! It's 
currently ice balling outside. It will be a little, a little frosty on the way to work tomorrow. Until then, let's have late night snackies with the Trone uh, waffle and Yay! So I'm assuming there's gonna be lemons involved. You like lemons? Where is it? Hello? Lemon! So this is uh, wafers with lemon cream. No one is surprised. This is a long paragraph. Buckle up. We love snacking as much as the next person, but Germans, they take it to a whole new level. In Germany, frequent snacks are just as important, if not more, the, as their three square meals. In fact, snacking is so engraved in German culture that there are numerous moments and mo yeah moments and phrases specifically reserved for the occasion. First, there is Pausenbrot, a near mandatory second breakfast. Oh, they are Germans are hobbits. Anywho, uh, of meat and pastries eaten at 10:30 a.m. Then there's Vesper and Brotzeit, optional snacks eaten in the morning and early afternoon between meals. For adults, there's oh no. Germany, why have you done this to me? Okay, look. <clears throat> I'm just gonna show you this thing. This one. What even? What is that word? Uh. Schweischen Malzit? Sure. Anywho, back to, uh, there's, there's that. Uh, a midday snack break, usually including beer. And let's not forget Café, uh, Café und Kuchen. An occasional sit-down for sweets and coffee, which can last up to two hours in the afternoon. I'm all for that. These light and flavorful wafers are the perfect fit for every snack occasion in Germany, whether it's morning, afternoon, or evening. With the zesty lemon cream filling and layers of crispy wafers, do like the Germans do and find a good reason to eat them anytime. Well, there are plenty. It is a giant bar of waferage. So, you know. And now, the real challenge... Afleb. Oh, you know what? I don't remember. I don't know what that symbol means either. I can't read any of this, you guys. I don't. Language is hard. But luckily, the Germans have given me a nice little doodad that will allow me. Oh, oh. Sad face. To open it and immediately have a wafer. Boop. Ooh, lemony. Oh. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, 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 oh. Graceful. Ooh, yeah, it is lemony. This is the best word I can use to describe it. It's very bright. Like the cream on your tongue. It's not like you're like licking a lemon tart. It's just very fresh. Interesting. Yeah, the lemon flavor is actually pretty chill. It's not like, you know, extraordinarily like, or anything like that. It's just, I don't know, fresh. Bright is honestly the best descriptor I can give it. It's interesting. It's almost like it's cooler, which is kind of makes no sense. I mean, yeah, it's cool in here. But, mmm, it's good though. Well, if you want a snack, have some Zitron waffle and lemon up your world. I have waffle crumbies all over my desk now. More snacks! You know, we had these already, if you recall. Unless you weren't here for that. In which case, you're fresh and new and alive and ready for. Curly peanut classic snackums. Where are they? So we have here they they they're, they're pretty much as described, honestly. I've, I've had them, they're they're tasty but weird. So you've had corn puffs, um, and you've had peanut butter. Now you're about to have them together. Yes, you are. It might sound a bit weird, and after one bite of these crispy puffs, you'll soon realize that this unusual German fusion is meant to be. The mild sweetness of the corn puff blends perfectly with the toasty salted peanut flavor for one irresistible snacking masterpiece. It's no wonder these peanut puffs are the stars of every birthday party, holiday gathering, and soccer match viewing across Germany. They're so good that once they're gone, you might be tempted to spread peanut butter and cheese puffs. Actually, that would be weird, and let's not do that. I mean, you know. It is what it is. 
smells like peanut butter. Actually, it smells like, I mean, there's a difference between peanut butter and peanuts. This smells like you just opened a bag of peanuts. And that's what they smelled like last time. So let's eat. It's a corn puff with peanut stuff. Peanut on it. It actually works out very well. So, I mean, if you... Let's say, what could you do? You could get like a regular plain corn puff. Grate some peanut over it. Or even just dunk in a little bit of peanut butter. That's literally what these taste like. So, it's kind of a chill, a chill flavor. A chill snack. It's like if you couldn't decide if you wanted peanuts or corn curls. And you just went, okay. Let's have both, why not? Pretty sure I enjoyed them last time. And, uh, I'm gonna enjoy them this time. And, yeah, as usual, it's a fairly sizable bag, and then... Uh, but, you know, what are you gonna do? Peanut curls. Hi there. I'm Blue. Dabba dee, dabba die. Let's cut open the yum bag. And because I don't have scissors like a normal human being, we're just gonna do that. I don't remember if the scissors broke while I was recording or not. It was kind of sad. They just kind of snapped in half, and it was just like... Oh. My scissors! So, there are two... There's a lot of little, little bitty baby cans in here. So let us eat two of them. Who knows, maybe we'll eat more. But for right now, we're just gonna have... It's apple! Apple? Apple? Apple! Oh, well, here we have it for a second. And Johannesberry, which I'm assuming is the, um, the blackberry? Or the, um... um... <sighs> is it blackberry? I don't know. Let's read. They sound kind of hard, but if I squish them, they feel slightly squishy. So I'm thinking maybe they're gonna be like sort of a hard, chewy uh, thing, my bob, burr ish, maybe, possibly, if I can find it. Where are they? Hello! Here we go. Bome, possibly. Sour fruit toffees. Ah, uh, interesting combo. I've never heard of toffee with fruit, but cool. Apple, passion fruit, grapefruit, or currant flavored. That's what we have. We have currant, I believe. Sort of chewy candy. So, I was right, chewy candy. The holiday festivities may be coming to a close. Sigh, it's the end of January. They have closed. But Je or, uh, Germany's winter celebrations are ramping up. From January to early March, thousands of locals gather for Carnival, with a K. An exciting festival featuring elaborate costumes, humorous stage shows, masquerade balls, and colorful parades, some stretching up to four miles long. I would like to uh, be involved in this. Thank you. Also called German Mardi Gras, this lively event is a fun way for locals to live it up before the fasting period of Lent begins on March 6th. What does all of this have to do with the candy in your hands? These toffees are the ultimate carnival classic, famously tossed from the festival's giant parade floats into crowds of eager children. For locals, young and old, their soft chewiness and tangy flavors never fail to evoke that special feeling of carnival excitement. So don't be sad about the holiday's ending. Pop a toffee on your mouth and keep on living it up. I guess that explains why they're so small. Because you need, if you're going to have a four mile long parade, you need a lot of candy to throw at people. Let's get the dog involved. A dog. It's not a candy? Look up, look up, look up. How are you today? Yes, you smell all the good things that I've already eaten. You brought this on yourself. Ah! <laughs> all right. Okay. Look respectable. We're going to have candy. We're going to have the candy. Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? This is going to be. Calm down. Calm down. Wait, stop it. If I know you enough... If I know you enough, maybe I'll stop. stop. This isn't for you. I'm. Br you're here for audience entertainment. Are you not entertained? Hello. Use your paws to help me out. This is- it's sticky. This isn't- what's with- I feel like this was a bad idea. Stop it. I love you, but stop it. No. Wait. I apologize for bringing you into this. There. Oh, it is kind of a sour thing going on here. Kind of like a. What are those candies you get at Halloween? They're like just the chewy, sour. Who's my what's it? They are tart. Make you drool. The chewy. So that was the blackberry. 
Now just go ahead and have apple, which I fear will probably be more tart. It's interesting that they're both white. Like, who knew? Just a little white square. How? I have two of each, so I'll more later. Hey, come on. If you're gonna be over here, you might as well be on camera. Haha. -ha. Oh, I was gonna say, what are you gonna do now, but you have giraffe neck. Alright, squidgy boy. I love you. That's enough, though. There we go. Do your upside down thing. You like your neck scratched. I know you do. Never mind that I smell like tart apple. It does taste like a nice tart apple. It's actually, in a weird way, like less sour than the other one. Um, maybe because I like tart apples. Granny Smith all the way for the win. That Christmas, that crunch. Mmm, good. So those are good little candies. Very juicy. Very tasty. Not too terribly sweet. Just good. Good and tasty. So go to Carnival and have yourself a snack. Don't bring your dachshunds. They will only annoy you. Yes? German dog? I don't know what's happening. Okay. Let's have some marzipan stolen. I had this before. Um, stolen, that is. Stolen. I don't remember if it was from Germany or not, though. I just know that I've eaten it at some some juncture in time. This is the Conditor Mars part stolen. Fruitcake with raisins and marzipan. Quick! What's the first thing that comes to your mind when we say fruitcake? Did your face just scrunch up in disgust? Most people don't like fruitcake, and that's because most people don't know German secret to making it. Germany's famous fruitcake, called Stollen, is so beloved across the country, there's even an entire winter, for winter festival dedicated to it. So what's the secret? Turns out it's marzipan. Locals roll long logs of this chewy almond confection into fruit-studded dough before baking. The result? A unique buttery delicacy with a dense nutty center that never turns dry. Solving the most common complaint about fruitcake. To be honest, I've never actually eaten, like, real legit fruitcake, so... You are about to try Germany's traditional marzipan stolen for yourself, and after one bite, we bet you will be saying, Fruitcake has stolen my heart. No. Stop it. Where's Michael Jordan when you need him? Stop it. Smells good. Smells like a good uh, baked, baked delight of some sort. Baked goodie, if you will. Some sugariness and sh other other confectionery stuffs. It looks like if I use my hands, it'll be sticky. So we're just gonna eat it right out of the package like this. So. So it's kind of like a, kind of got like a flaky thing happening on the inside there, kind of, if it'll, I mean it will, but you know, you get the idea. Found raisin. Found a nut of some kind, I think. There's the marzipan center in there. That's pretty good. Oh. Yeah. This seems like a, a good holiday baked item to enjoy. I mean, if you don't like stuff with raisins in it, skip. If you don't like almonds, skip. Even though, really, the almond flavor isn't super strong. So. But. Yeah. It's a tasty little bit good. Makes me think of. Not a whole lot, but just like a wee, like a smidge of, um, coffee cake. But, yeah. Have yourself some, uh, some stolen next winter. On the eve of the coldest night of the year, let's finish the yums. I don't have a lot left. I have my little yums bag here, which has three flavors of, um, whatever these are. Some kind of little, uh... 
Mr. Bluber, Mr. No, Mr. Blubber. Is that they also? Mr. Mr. Blubber. Blub blub blub. Um, I'm guessing it's some kind of fruit candy. Fizzy fruity, fresh. Says the, the thingamabobber here. It looks like I've um three. No, maybe I have more than one. It's hard to tell. I got some different colors, but then at the same time they all have different markings on them. So I don't know if that's indicative or something. I don't know. We're gonna find out. Let's read about the snackies and then uh, find out what's going on. So these are Mr. Blubber Lucky Gluck in parentheses coins. Apparently, there are cola, lemon, raspberry, cherry, or orange flavored assortment sherbet candy. Ooh, I like that idea. The phrase, see a penny pick it up and all the day long you'll have good luck, is more than a fun saying in Germany. It's also a saying here. You know what? I pick up every penny I see and then I promptly announce to all my employees, guys, I'm retiring, I'm rich, I found a penny. And then they make fun of me. It's a habit. Since the 1700s, shiny copper pennies called... Uh, there's a P in front of an F, and I don't know what sound that's supposed to make, so I'm just going to kind of go with the finnig. Have been kept by locals to drive away dark magic. Historically, Germans carried the coins in their pockets to protect from lies and trickery, and they even nailed the money to their doors to ward off witches and sorcerers. Nowadays, lucky pennies, called <laughs> uh, Glucksfennig, maybe, are still exchanged in Germany throughout the month of January, though not exactly for the same reasons. Today, shiny tokens have a different meaning, to bring luck and wealth as well as ensure that one never runs out of money. Fortunately, we found the trustiest way, interesting word choice, uh, to bring luck and wealth to you in 2019 instead of carrying a lucky coin all year, it won. This doesn't explain these candies in the least. I get, okay. So, let's see, given the colors I have and the flavor descriptions, I think I might have a lemon because this looks, although it looks kind of green. Orange, I think. Mostly orange. And then maybe either th three raspberries, three cherries, or maybe a mixture of raspberry and cherry. I don't really know because they're all pink. So. Anywho, let's go with this greenish one first. I don't know. It doesn't really, it smells, um... I'm also not really sure what the shape is on here. I don't know if it'll show up for you or not. It's... Can you see that? Like a what? I don't know. Is this supposed to be like the shape of a... Um... Piggy bank? I don't know. Anyway, let's just eat it. We're here for food. Go crunch it? Let's crunch it? It's kind of got like a weird fuzzy thing happening. <clears throat> I think that was a lemon. Kind of like how you know sherbet, I guess, when you eat it. Maybe I'm not supposed to eat a whole coin at once. Cry me. That was a little overwhelming. Um, but you know how sherbet kind of tingles a little bit on your tongue? I'm not really sure what exactly sherbet is, to be honest. Um looking at some of the there's sodium bicarbonate that makes more sense as to why it's kind of you know shebanging in my mouth there so this one's kind of orangey they don't really smell I mean they have a smell but they don't really smell like anything fruity I think I feel like I'm smelling mostly the sodium bicarbonate <laughs> it's kind of weird it feels weird in my stomach too like I had a moment there where I kind of paused. I'm like, is it like popping in my mouth? Like, what is happening here? So I don't know. I feel like maybe I should take a drink of water. It's kind of weirding me out. I don't know how I feel about this. Let's eat another one then. Because that's what intelligent people do after trying something that's questionable. They keep going. I'm only going to eat half this one. Orange. Foaming up. It 
This is weird. I opened my mouth a little bit there. It's probably, I don't think it's going to get picked up on there, but I, <clears throat> I could hear it kind of going foaming. Not, not like hardcore, like pop rocks or anything, but just like a kind of something. <clears throat> okay, so that was orange. Ugh, whew, keep going. Because we got these pink ones. I'm just going to eat one pink one. If they're different, I'll... I honestly can't tell. I don't know. Whatever. We're just going to eat eat the, the horse, horseshoe one. Horseshoe. Oh, that worked. Oh, this one's raspberry. That's nice. Because I'm not the biggest fan of cherry candy, to be honest. I think a lot of the problem... Is that it's associated with a lot of fake cherry flavor? Wait, hold on. I can't talk with this in my mouth. Hold on. It gets so foamy. It's weird. Like if you melted sherbet, and it gets foofier. <coughs> okay, I didn't like that at all. <laughs> no, no. Nah. Nah. Uh, I just have like a stomach full of stuff now. It is. There's a whole couple of minutes of me, they're just going, brr, just belching and just, blah. let's move on away from that. I'm not eating the last two. I might put them somewhere and <laughs> destroy my coworkers with them because <laughs> I'm evil. This is uh, similar to the other one, uh, that other um, candy bar we had, except this one looks like it's white chocolate, which, um, yes, premium white chocolate with poppy seed, of all things. Um, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know my thoughts on white chocolate, but we'll deal with it. Some white chocolate is good, I will admit. There are some it's hard to find, and you don't come across very often, but some of it's okay. Still technically not chocolate, it's actually chocolate byproduct, but that's beside the point. Calm down, camera. I see you getting weird. This is a Chocomunk poppy seed bar, and if you live in the U.S., you've probably only seen poppy seeds on bagels, and, well, bagels. Come on now. Lemon poppy seed muffins. Get with it. Maybe an occasional lemon muffin. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. But things are different in Germany. Walk into any local bakery and you'll be bombarded with countless speckled desserts. Actually, there's bread with stuff. There's all sorts of stuff. Anyway, uh, from, oh boy, Monstreisel, uh, poppy seed rolls, and Monzoff, iced poppy seed. I'm guessing the word M-O-H-N stands for poppy. Oh my god. Ugh. Ugh. It doesn't stop. The things, the, the sherbet things, why? Um, Monzop, iced poppy seed braids to Monkuchen, poppy seed coffee cake, and oh, I don't remember what that symbol means. Um, Monkleibla, <laughs> poppy seed bread pudding. Sorry, Germany, if there are any Germans out there, apologize for not saying anything correctly. I'm trying, I just I don't know what it's supposed to sound like. Why so many poppy seeds? Locals believe their nutty bitterness brings balance to even the richest of desserts. Okay. Creating a unique sweet and savory flavor harmony. Made by one of Germany's master chocolatiers. This white chocolate poppy seed bar isn't just unusual, it's unusually delicious. Alright, master chocolatier. Frickin' wow me with your goods and things. Oh, look at this. Made in Germany. Yeah, right there. Yeah, it's made in Germany. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know if I'll eat this in one sitting, because that's a lot of white chocolate. That looks like a lot of poppy seeds, too. Oh my god. You can see them. It looks like if you've ever had one of the Hershey's cookies and cream, it looks kind of like that, only with poppy seeds. So, oh, this will be interesting. Let's just break off a note. I don't want two squares. I just want. I just want to start with one. Thank you. All right. I was like sugar and uh, chocolate byproduct. Let's. It's got to be better than those things that are still roiling around in my tum tum. Got that extra little crunch from the poppy seeds. I mean, I've never really thought about poppy seeds having a taste of any kind, to be perfectly honest. I always thought of them as more like a like a decoration, you know? Like on the lemon muffins. Or on and in. But they've never really added or subtracted really anything to the muffins. Just kind of a thing that's there. Like, you would now, I'm pretty much out of chocolate, and I'm just kind of noshing on seeds. 
I mean, they had an unusual sort of, well, not even really unusual, they add a bit of, like, a kind of texture to the candy bar, but, um, I, I don't know. <laughs> not like they, they don't balance anything out, I wouldn't say. It's just, here's some poppy seeds in your chocolate. It's not bad. It's not impressive. It's literally just poppy seeds in white chocolate. It could exist for people's enjoyment. It could have never existed at all, and I would have no opinion on the matter. But hey, here we are. I'm going to have poppy seeds in my teeth now. Mm. But now that we're at the end of our little journey, now that we've eaten all the things in our giant yum yum box, there is also, in case you didn't know, the super yum box, which is even more stuff. And I'm not even really sure how much bigger it is. Because the Yum Yum box is pretty sizable. But here's a few other things we could have had. Uh, the Palm's Curry Worst. The number one street food... <laughs> number one street food in crunchy snack form. The Finn Lichen... Lynchen... Lincoln? <clears throat> Herb crackers. Flaky cracker made in a waffle iron. Tasty. And uh, a whole browse... Germany's most famous fizzy drink powder since 1925. So I guess you would just kind of dump that into, um, I don't know, water or whatever. Anywho, oh no. <clears throat> oh, I'm telling you, this, uh, the candies. Do y'all in Germany, do you eat more than one of those in one sitting? Or do you just like enjoy one and then move on with life? Because, no. <laughs> Pass. Anyway, we don't have Tiny Doggo right now because he's currently in his final stage of blanket form. Uh, here's the clue to next month's box. Let's, let's escape. We're gonna, we're gonna get out of this. <laughs> I know I have poppy seeds in my teeth. Next month, we celebrate love of all kinds. Love for spouses, crushes, and yums that we find. From 300-year-old cookies, once made in a churchyard, to famous triangle chocolates, prepared to fall hard. Wait a minute. That sounds familiar. Where are Toblerones from? Hold on. We've been here. Okay, I guess we haven't been to Switzerland. I went and looked at my videos because I don't remember everywhere we've been. I just, I just, I don't remember a lot of things. You guys, I'm sorry, but uh, if we're talking about triangly chocolates, that's like I said, and I don't know about the whole 300 year old cookies, but we still haven't been to Switzerland. So hey, maybe we'll go to Switzerland, which would be great. And uh, you can get me actual chocolate, chocolate, the the good, the good can, the excellent, delicious. Thanks for joining. Hope you had a good time watching me be weird and eat things that I don't normally eat. Mispronounce um, all sorts of words from Germany. If you're from Germany, I'm sorry. Apologize. I try. I'm used to English. And then I took some years of Japanese and Spanish in high school. So that's the extent of my language skills. So I guess we'll see you next month. Well, until then, toodles. I never know how to end these videos. Oh, I've got a mouthful of poppy seeds now.